Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So in previous channel, uh, in previous video, we already talked about how to describe two random variables. So we say we can use the joint probability density function to describe the probability of two continuous random variables. So in this video, I want to talk about some relationship between two random variables. So here, I want to talk about the independence. So about the independence from this uh, word, we can think about this means uh, the outcomes of the first random variable, for example, we denote this by x, won't affect the outcomes of, of the possible values of our second uh, random variable denoted by y. And if we talk about this, there is a Random ver uh, independence is now the first time we talk about independence. So previous in the previous video, we also talk about what is independence of two in ones. So if you haven't viewed that material, so please make sure you look at it. So in this video, I just uh, before introduce the definition of the independence of two random variable. I will give a quick review of the independence of in ones. So for independence in advance, it means if we know the probability of the intersection will equal the product of the probability for all of the subcollections of the group of events. Then we can say this two, this events are independent with, with each other. So here, if we have a uh, if we only have two events like e one and e two, so then what we need is we just need the probability of intersection of e one and e uh, e two is equal to the product of our uh this two probability. However, if we have e one, e two, and e three, then we should check all the sub uh, collection. So it means we need to check the intersection between E1 and E2 and the intersection of the E2 and E3 and also the intersection of E1, E3. And then we also need to check the intersection of E1, E2 and E3. So this three uh, three events. So that means the more events you have, the, the more uh, possible subcollection we have and this means this uh this equation we need to check is uh, much more complicated so for the definition of the independence of random variable what we can give is we will use the idea of independence of events for our independent uh to give us the definition of independence of random variable. So assume we have two probability, uh, two random variable x and y, and both are continuous uh, random variable. Uh, so the what we have, we have if these two uh, random variable are independent, the uh, we can, if we have only one of these two requirements are correct. So the first one is the joint probability density function is equal to the product of the PDF probability density function with each of them. And then the second one is if for any uh, set x and uh, a and b uh, of the range of our x and y, if this uh, product the probability of this intersection x in a and y in b is equal to the product of the probability uh these two probabilities then if any of one or two crack then we can say these two random variable x and y are independent so here if we look at the second a requirement. You can see this actually is really similar to our materials about independence of events, right? So the independence events, we say we need all of the sub, for all of the sub collections, we have this uh, relationship, like the probability of the intersection equals the product of probabilities. And if we look at this uh, second requirement, we can say this, we also have any sets. So actually, this is kind of like the, all of the sub-collections of our uh, events. And then the equation we have is also the probability of intersection equals the product of two probabilities. So you can see by this uh, second 
uh, conditions or requirements. Actually, this is a really uh, smooth or parallel uh, requirement uh, from our independence of, of the event. And then uh, how to understand the first uh, equation. So when we see like uh, what is, how to compute the probability of a continuous random variable, what should we do? Actually, we use the uh, uh, integral, right? So for example, if we say the probability x in A and y in B, then what this mean? This means we compute this integral of our joint probability uh, density function with respect to y and x, and the region of the upper and lower limit of our y is b, and the uh, range for our x is a. And then here, if by our first requirement, the inside this joint probability density function can be rewrite by the product of two uh, function, then what we can do? Now we know when we do the double integral, when we integral this respect to y, then what should we do? We will just treat x as a constant. So that means in this equation, actually we can move this uh, first uh, PDF of x uh, from outside from our this inner integral. Right? So that means we will have equation. So this is what we have. And now when we look at uh, this uh, integral of our inner integral with respect to y, this will become some number, right? So it's like you can think about the integral of function with respect to y. This function is only have one uh, variable about y, then this will just give us a number. So then when we consider about this uh, integral with respect to x, then we can just treat this inner uh, integral as a number. So that means we can move this out from our integral. We will have an equation look like this. And now, actually, this two uh, integral is a, a product with each other, right? So the first integral actually is the probability of x in A, and the second integral is our probability of y in B, right? So now you can see if we have a equation of our inner, uh, our joint uh, probability density function f x y is equal to the product of these two uh, PDF. Then actually we can have a equation of this uh, probability of intersection equal to the product of probability, and this is uh, our requirement two. And also, this is a smooth, uh, you know, inferior from our definition of independent, uh, independence of events, right? So that's why here we have two methods to check two random variable are independent with each other or not. So when you meet a problem, what you should do is it just depends what you have. If in the in the question or in your project. What you have is you have the PDF, joint PDF, fxy, and you also have the marginal PDF for x and also for y. Then, of course, you can use the force uh, requirements here. However, if this question is some more, actually this happen a lot, like this is you collect some data from your experiment, maybe it's about some physics or about chemistry or uh, material engineering, so you haven't have a very clear uh, equation for the PDF, but you already have all of the probabilities about the events you're interested, about all the A and B, this events you have, and you know the probability of them because you can count in how many experiments you have and how many outcomes is fell into the range A and fell into range B. So you have the information of probability. So in this situation, then use the second requirement is more straightforward. You don't need to spend so many time to find the formula or a PDF of the random variable. You already have the information about probability. So you will use the second equation. Okay, 
So here, uh, before the end of this lecture, I want to give you a quick example about how to use the force equation to track two random variables at independence with, with each other or not. So this question is about this equation. So now we have the information of the joint probability density function fxy. It's equal xy x plus y divided by 32. And then the region of this uh, random variable is 0 smaller than x more than y smaller than 4. So then uh, what we should do is to check x, y at independence or not. Of course, here we will prefer to use a uh, equation about check the equation about the joint probability function and the marginal probability function. So here in the question, they already give us information of the left-hand side of this um, joint probability density function. And to use this formula, we need to try to find the marginal probability density function. So that means here, the first step we need to find is we try to integral about all of the region of our density uh, of our y for our de joint density function with respect to y, right? And then by the question, uh, the region of 0 smaller than x smaller than y smaller than 4, we can find the region for this uh, integral should become from x to 4. And then by our knowledge of the double integral, we can get the final answer for this equation is a 3y squared over uh, 46. Okay, so this is our answer for the marginal probability density function for x. And similarly, we can compute this for our y. So the idea of this is we need to integral of this joint probability density function with respect to x. And by the question, the upper and lower limited of this y should be lower is 0, upper is y. And then by compute this one, we can get the answer of this uh, marginal probability density function of y should equal uh, 3y squared over 64. And the answer for the uh, marginal probability density function for x is x over 8 plus 1 fourth minus 3x cubed over 64. Okay, so now if we have this two equation of our marginal probability density function, we will try to find what is a product of this two marginal probability function. Uh, density function. So then we will use the two answer we compute and times each other. And uh, actually we didn't need to get the final answer of this one, right? Because if we compare this answer, we can find this one is uh, far away from our answer of the probability joint function. The probability joint function is much simple. It's just equal the 1 over 32x plus 1. So because here we have this uh, product of the marginal joint probability density function is not equal our joint probability function. So that's why here our answer is x and y are not independent. Okay, so this is what uh what we can have use this uh, force requirement, the probability, uh, joint probability density function and marginal probability density function to check two random variables at independence or not. So here I skip the steps how to compute the, uh, the marginal density function. So if you're interested about this part, please leave a comments under this videos and maybe later I will upload the video to uh, give more details about this uh, this part. Okay, so this is my uh, explanation of the independence of two random variables. So in 
Uh, next videos, I will talk a uh, more a uh, relationship of two random variables. So that means if two random variables are not independent, how we can describe their relationship? So please subscribe this channel and see you in next video.